<clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, I mean, obviously can't say enough about uh, just uh, this team and how they attack the the game tonight. And, you know, that's what I love about this group is, uh, you know, they took it to heart uh, back when we went to Iowa and Clark and Susano kind of had their way with us. And um, you just saw the, the focus and uh, the intention today. I mean, um, I thought it was, you know, obviously that second quarter was a thing of beauty when you saw, you know, the defensive game plan uh, that, that we had and we were super locked in uh, with the two of them. And then offensively, just, um, you know, just how unselfish we were and sharing the basketball. Uh, also, you know, told the, the team in the locker room, I mean, for Nay and Lav, um, you know, just continuing to stay the course for us and to be able to have that kind of uh, X factor night for us was, was huge. It was um, big, big reason for for our success, and that's what we've got to be able to have uh, when when you're talking about uh, you know as a team and just how much depth and and talent we have. But um, again, I think since the Nebraska loss, I mean, you, you talk about this team has won eight straight games at home and. Um, including top 10 wins, uh, you know, against UConn, Ohio State, and, and Iowa. So just putting a really complete resume, uh, peaking at the right time going into the tournament. And um, I, I think it says a lot about uh, the response tonight uh, for the 40 minutes. And Lab, this is for both of y'all. At, at what point did you kind of start feeling it? Um, know you're going to kind of have uh, one of those nights and – you know, how nice is it to kind of finally put together one of these big games? Because I know, you you know, as a bench, we've talked a lot about it this season, um, that when you guys kind of get clicking, you could be real dangerous. And I think we saw that a little bit tonight. <laughs> um, well, for me, I feel like it was definitely during my warm up. I felt really good during my warm up. Um, I was knocking out my shots and I was just really confident and positive going into this game. And it feels great to finally have a game like this after I feel like I've been working hard and I've had like a hard season. So it just feels good. I was going to say, yeah, and for me, I feel like I was due for a good shooting game. Um, <laughs> but also at the same time, I think my defense fuels my offense and I really try to, um, I know if shots aren't falling, that's one thing I can keep consistent. So just my defensive effort and energy being on top of that, I feel like that fuels my offensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, to answer your first question, um, I feel like I did my job pretty well, but I mean, it was a collective effort. Um, we really preached a uh, heavy gap to sh um, for this game. And then obviously Lav um, took over Caitlin Clark a few times for me too. So it was just um, a really good all around effort. And then, you know, it's obviously good to shut someone down of that caliber. So um, it was just a good job for us tonight. That's bad for her. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Lav, um, you know, you hit that transition three in the third, I think it was, and I saw you kind of give a little, you know, you're not usually the most animated player, and you kind of gave a yeah. little and then said, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <in> between. <laughs> um, can you kind of talk about that moment and kind of, you know, you said you had a tough season. Is that something of, like, a culmination of, like, oh, finally, like, it's, it's starting to fall and stuff like that, or was it just kind of, you know, you being in the moment type of thing? Um. Well, yeah, I definitely don't show a lot of emotion when I play, but tonight I was feeling really good. Um, as a whole, our our team's energy was at a like it was off the charts, and it, it that fuels everybody. And I I was shooting good, and I felt great. And yeah, I think that was my first time ever throwing my hand up like that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, for Bree. Um, in the second quarter, you hit a you hit a three. It was around when you were starting to get hot. Um, I think Iowa called a quick timeout, and on the jumbotron, you saw Brenda just look at you and smile. Um, talk about that that moment of the game, <coughs> and was that moment like a pivotal turning point, you know, for you, and you know, I guess how this game was going to go. Yeah, um, pretty much. I've I haven't felt just the most confident in my shot lately. But everyone tells me, you know, keep shooting. You're a great shooter. You're still shooting a great percentage. Like, it's okay. Like, it'll they'll fall as long as you focus on the other things. Um, 
<clears throat> and I think what also helps is, you know, seeing the ball go in the basket. So those first couple drives and like a jumper first, like gets me feeling good. Um, and also, you know, I feel like everyone was just like, yes, like she's finally, I guess, back. <laughs> but um, I knew everyone was saying too that, you know, I'll peak at the right time. And I feel like this was the perfect time. Well, mo like mostly my teammates and the coaches and, yeah, you know, Shy specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for, for Shy or Lav, last season, Shy, you know, when you were on Caitlin in Iowa, obviously had a great performance, you know, holding her to this, you know, under 20 points. You know, you guys kind of split the assignment today on defending her. So what was the game plan? How were you guys able to hold them to a combined 48 points less uh, than you did two weeks ago? Um, we know that um, Monica and Caitlin take most of their shots. So limiting their touches was really vital. And we see, you know, Monica only got five field goal attempts, and that's Caitlin's main person who she's passing to. So just dialing in and locking in on those two. And then, um, you know, everyone else, they can beat us. We talked earlier this season about how one of the reasons you came to Maryland was to play in these big games and beat teams like UConn. And now, um, as the season wraps up, beating number six Iowa at home, what's it feeling like for you? It feels amazing. I just, I love being here. I love playing for this team. But also, um, it, it gives me feeling really good moving forward. And, you know, we're still playing with a chip on our shoulder because I feel like a lot of people have underestimated us as a team um, this whole year, pretty much. Um, but, yeah, I'm just ready to play these next games. Damon Brooks, that's pseudo times. Um, Diamond, you didn't get your offense going in the first half much, but your team seemed to, you know, knock down shots easily. How open was the floor for you, you know, once they began to knock down shots, especially from, you know, Bree and Lavender? Um, <laughs> I know overall I think Iowa did a great uh, job playing defense on me. They were trying to like really clog the plane. And yeah, my teammates just shot the lights out today, so that's always a plus. And I'm just happy they're confident because we're gonna need them in the long run when we think long term. So this is one of many for sure. Um, yeah, I think the first time we played them, we knew we laid an egg and we knew we didn't play the best to our abilities. So this game, we definitely wanted to play a full 40 minutes, and I think we did that. So that's all we try to execute is playing all 40 minutes and executing the game plan in the scout. And yeah. Yeah, I think Coach P has been talking to me and laughed a lot about being those veterans to step up in big moments like that. And I think we really take pride in that. <clears throat> and, you know, it was unfortunate having her go out with foul trouble, but we also knew that um, our defensive effort could really make up for it. And we were knocking down shots and feeling good. So. We'll do two more. We'll do Sam and then Dylan and then wrap up the players. <laughs> um, uh, my teammates laugh at me because sometimes I'll shoot and I'll be like off and it goes in and they're like stop saying that but um, you know it always I always brush off the first one if it's make or miss you know I'm like you know I'll just get the ball back find a groove somewhere else but once they started you know I started feeling it I got hot the basket just felt so open it felt like anything I threw up was going to go in Yeah, yeah, that was definitely a heat check.
Um, I feel like our game plan was, well, like Shash said, to make everybody else on the team beat us. So we really tried to take Caitlin out of the game. And by doing that, we we played pressure for 40 minutes. I mean, I was chasing her around all over the court, picking her up full court. And it was really just my focus to force her to the right because she likes to do everything going left. And <laughs> that was just the main goal to take her out of the game. Yeah, I thought somebody was going to ask me about my hair, but y'all fake. It wasn't. It was actually Kate who did my hair. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> good night, y'all. <laughs> All right. We'll start off with questions prepared by the Korean Red Cup. Okay, right. I wanted to ask you something in terms of style. Zach, more energy. Like, you know, you guys have some success coaches that are some good stretches when it comes to the top five. So what changed? Um, well, I think, you know, leading up to it, uh, they were really challenged. I, I think, uh, you know, watching film back uh, of themselves, you know, getting beat with the rim runs to start with, um, intentionally, you know, making sure our mindset w was, uh, I don't know that they got really anything easy on those rim runs like, like they did uh, in Iowa City. Um, and then obviously the big two, I mean, uh, Caitlin had 42 points on us in that game and between the two of them, uh, we had no answer. So, um, I thought they were just really locked in and, and kind of understood the, the scout, uh, you know, a lot more sp specifically. And I, I thought just, you know, a lot of pride in that locker room. Uh, you know, I think it shows tonight. Coach, uh, when coach Bluter was up here, she said that that was the best defensive job that she's seen someone do on, on Caitlin. Um, and obviously Lav was a big part of that. Um, can you just talk about like from Lav's perspective, carrying that much of a load on defense and while also putting in one of her best offensive games. Yeah, um, you know, it just, it, it shows you what Lav is capable of and, and how talented she is. And I think, you know, sometimes we do get caught up on our offense, but when we can focus on our defense, the rest takes care of itself. And I thought she was sensational. I, I thought she just was really locked in to um, defensively. And then, you know, if there were screens, you kind of saw two people coming at her and, and making her have to, to give it up. So, um, you know, we wanted her to have to work. We knew she was going to be able to score, but I thought her 18 points and many of them really late in the fourth quarter, um, she had to work for, for every single point that she got tonight. Hi, Coach. Um, so in the fourth quarter, sorry, <laughs> with a minute left, um, when Abby and Brene came off the court, you gave each of them a really, like, a really big hug. I was wondering, like, how are you feeling at that time? And were you just like, oh, my gosh, I need to give you a big squeeze? Or... <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, for, you know, Abby, your last, uh, you know, Big Ten game, last home game here, you know, hopefully until we, we host. But, you know, what a way to, to go out that you'll remember. And, you know, for from Nay's end, I mean, she has been, you know, both her and Lav, they, they've been putting their head down. And, you know, when sometimes you don't see those results and, and we're kind of in a society that you want those instantly, I'm really proud of those two. When you look at our bench points and the 43 bench points came from those two. And it, it absolutely was the X factor. It was the reason why um, we dominated the, this game was the, the two of them. And, uh, you know, we, we obviously know what, you know, the rest can do. But um, those two were, were pretty special for us tonight, and which made this even better. It, it makes no sense, right? This uh, two games ago, we were 0 for 18 from the three point line. So there's always that that annoying voice in the back of my head, like, you know, that um, how long are we going to keep this up for? And um, the, the heat check three that Nay had in transition, I was like, wow. And then when it went in, it was one of those kind of nights. So. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you got to kind of feel the rhythm and, and the energy and, and obviously they're the ones out there uh, making the shots. So 
Um, I think I'll enjoy it a lot more when I go back. And, you know, there were moments tonight, clearly. Um, but when you get to go back and kind of watch it and know that you won the game and in such a convincing uh, manner will we'll be special. Hey, Coach. Um, Brene and um, Lavender came off the bench and played really well to the tune of 43 points. Is that what you envisioned when you brought them to the team this season? Yeah, I mean, those two are really talented and uh, have played in the SEC and have led their teams respectively uh, when they came here. So, yeah, I mean, it just it continues to show – um, you know, just what we can do moving out ahead. I think that's the exciting thing is for those two to gain the confidence that we already have had in them all year. Um, but you know, that, that they belong on, on such a big stage and, um, that they're, they're really talented players. Hey coach, um, I know you're super humble, so I don't want to make you brag here, but can you talk a little bit about the, what, you know, kind of the coaching job that you've done to bring in this team and maybe your coaching staff as a whole, um, and just kind of how, how you've tried to work to get the best out of, uh, you know, all, all these players and all, all the new faces that came in. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, this this team's going to go down um, as a really special group. Last year, we all know, was was, was a tough year, um, personally and professionally. And so um, to have all the changes, and I think where a lot of people call counted this team out, and one returning starter with Diamondback, um, it's unbelievable to, to see the non-conference schedule that – they had to go uh, against, which was built for a, a veteran-led team that wasn't here anymore. And then uh, conference has been the the strongest it's ever been since since we've come in. So, yeah, this this team's gonna. Um, uh, we're nowhere near to you know ready for it. Uh, you know, it's a long ways from from ending, but it's definitely a, a team that um, I think it just shows when you have the right pieces and the right chemistry. And I'll say. Um, from our staff's end, when we were looking at one point with, you know, seven, eight players on the roster, uh, it was pretty daunting in the spring. You can ask my husband and my family. Um, but, you know, just to see the right pieces come together and, and the fit and them to buy into a whole new system was has been pretty incredible. Hey, Coach, you guys now have four wins over um, top ten teams. Um Kind of going off what Ian's question was, what does that say about this team and their ability to just work together and like bring out the best in each other on the court? Yeah, um, the trust, the the trust factor, the belief, the the confidence. You know, we were able to establish a lot of that in the non-conference when you go on the road and beat a Baylor and and beat Notre Dame and um, are able to to take that. But I think more so their response. I mean, you look at after that Nebraska loss here um, to go on and continue to to win the amount of games that we were able to do here at home. Um, and then, you know, you take the response of the Iowa loss. We, we've always um, had just terrific responses that, that I think continues to show you what makes this team pretty elite. Hey, Coach. Uh, Iowa's coach wasn't as impressed as the crowd as I think some of us thought. She said, quote, the crowd was fine. So how would you think – how do you think the crowd played into your guys' success this tonight? You know, I love our crowd, and I thought uh, they were tremendous. And, uh, you know, they were loud. Uh, our student section, uh, you know, you could see them, and, and uh, they were into the game the, the entire time. And, um, you know, like, you know, they, they were our ultimate six man and, and were a big X factor for us. Hey, Coach. So this is, you know, Iowa State. Uh, Ohio State top 10 team in the country, Iowa here, you guys win them by a combined 64 points and in, a, in a matter of you know just, ju just a couple of weeks. Can you kind of speak to how you guys have been able to play so well against you know, the top teams, not, not only in the conference, but you know, in the nation, what that says on a national level, you know, getting these statement wins? Yeah, um, it's, it's pretty mind boggling, you know, that we're just not winning them. You know, I think, you know, I had pulled up the app today where it said the game was going to be even and, uh, you know, to, to, again, like just to, to you talk about those two teams and to be able to dominate games like that. Um, but again, it comes down to focus and, and energy executing the scout, uh, the, the game plan. And when we're locked in, we're, we're really good. If, if we tend to stray, we're not so good. We're, we're only, um, you know, we, we have to really stay focused on what we're doing. But, um, you know, again, it continues to show what we're capable of when, when we're focused. 
Coach, uh, you mentioned yesterday how important it'll be for Diamond to play and stay on the floor. She picks up her second foul early in the second quarter. Game's tied at 22. What's going through your head, and how quickly did your mindset change when Lavender and Brene were knocking down those threes? I wanted to choke her, <laughs> although I would never do that. I love Diamond. Um, and, you know, on war, uh, on uh, Gabby Marshall, like so far out from the basket, I really thought that was, you know, just reminded me of uh, when we were down there when she picked up her second. But um, again, I, you know, I was waiting to see if I was going to get her back in. And then that second quarter, the, her teammates just took over. And that's the sign of a really good team when, you know, they've, uh, you know, Diamonds carried this team a, a lot of games and, you know, to continue to, to step up in her absence, um, I, th I thought was huge. Hey coach, uh, a lot of, you know, ben a lot of bench points today, obviously. Um, but in the second quarter, we saw Brene really paired with Abby um, in the front court. And then I think in the third and fourth quarter, it was more of Brene and Diamond. I'm curious which pairing you thought um, maybe looked better? I mean, I know all of them looked, looked really well today, you know, across the entire bench, but for those three players specifically, was there an area where you felt, I guess, Brene did better um, with Diamond or with Abby? Yeah, um, you know, I'll have to go back and watch the film. I mean, you're just kind of sometimes when you're in the flow of the game, it's it's defense and offense. And, you know, it was really hard to choose because Lav, we needed defensively on top of her offense, she just did such a great job on Clark. And then Nay, um, you know, especially obviously in that second quarter and, and the way she was shooting the ball. So, and, and Nay was actually giving us some really great stuff defensively as well. So, um, you know, you know, I, I think obviously, you know, you're, you're just continuing to kind of look at those parents. I don't think I was married to any of them. It's just, uh, you know, kind of offensively and defensively. Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. Um, so going towards a little in the future for Friday's game, is there anything that you guys are looking to improve or work on before facing Ohio State? Yeah, you know, I mean, I spoke very briefly because, I mean, it's really not the time yet until we see him tomorrow. But just understanding, you know, the mindset, you know, our, our motivation going into this game after we were embarrassed um, it, it, Ohio State's a prideful team, and uh, they're they're going to be ready. It's senior night, and uh, they'll be extremely focused uh, coming into the game. It, every road game is really really tough. I mean, we had a tough game when we went to Michigan State. So just understanding how to come off of this high and letting them enjoy it tonight. But then um, this is our three games in seven days the the second time around. So just, uh, you know, understanding what it takes to, to come back down from that and, and being ready to finish this out. Thank you. Just want to congratulate Maryland. They played a great game, uh, came out, and, I mean, they just uh, really did a great job in that second quarter. I thought the first quarter we did an okay job. We were winning by one. The second quarter is what really defined this game, in my opinion. Turned the ball over too many times. Uh, we gave up too many O boards in that second quarter. Uh, and everything that they put up went in tonight. Um, and so it was kind of a reverse of what happened at our place. Um, so it will move on. Coach, um, you know, you guys are home and the crowd is home. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the Xfinity Center crowd tonight and how, how much that energy played in the game? Um, I don't know that it affected it at all. I mean, honestly, this is one of the smaller crowds that we've went against. I mean, we've played in front of 10,000, 14,000 on the road. Um, I, this might be, a, is this a really good one for Maryland? I don't know. I, I'm asking you guys. There was not 9,000 people there. Was there? You, did, you thought it felt like it? Okay, yeah, great. We usually, we usually bring out the best in everybody's crowds. I, I, I really don't think it was a factor in our, in our play, though. I think Maryland was a factor in our play. Maryland did a good job. Not the, I mean, the crowd is fine. But I'd rather play in front of a raucous crowd every day than in front of a dead arena. Absolutely. No, I think Maryland did a really good job being physical and denying passing lanes, and they just did a really good job. I think that we were a little sloppy, but I think it was because of Maryland's great defense.
Uh, Coach, Maryland didn't really press you until mm -hmm. the fourth quarter. Did you, you know, you know, typically they uh, press early on. You know, how did that affect your scout your scout for them today? Um, I mean, we were prepared for the press. They didn't press, so, you know, we just brought the ball up the floor. What was Maryland able to do specifically to bottle up Caitlin Clark? They denied the heck out of her, right? They face guarded her the whole time, so that was great. I mean, they did a really good job with that. Best, I mean, that was really the best we've seen all year. They did a really good job with it. All right, they had somebody in front of her, somebody behind her the whole time, you know, and so they were, you know, basically had two people around her and did a great job with it. A little bit of both. I thought our transition back into our zone wasn't very good tonight. Um, but, um, I mean, I, they, they, they hit some threes. I mean, obviously, Lavender Briggs hasn't been hitting threes like that all year. Uh, and she really stepped up and hit some good ones tonight. Um, we knew Alexander was a really good three-point shooter, though. We knew that. Coach, um, over here. Um, Diamond Miller picked up her second foul there in the second quarter. It was tied game at 22. You know, uh, a couple weeks ago, that was kind of the difference. Mm -hmm. You guys were able to capitalize on that. Do you feel you guys just weren't aggressive tonight, uh, aggressive enough tonight to capitalize on her being off the floor, offensively? Um, I mean, I just I think the rest of those players really picked it up. I mean, when you have bench players coming in and and do you know having 19 and 24, I mean that's really good. That's really good. Coach, going back to Maryland's half court defense. Would you describe it? Was it was it a two three with like somebody face guarded? I'd call it a box and one. Would you think, you think yeah. it was a box the entire? That's time what I would call it. I don't know what Brenda calls it, but that's what I would call it. Okay. Coach, I'm just curious what your thoughts were on like your catch and shoot opportunities today. I saw a lot of players running off screens. You know, just curious how that affected the game plan for you guys today. Yeah, we did not shoot the ball well. Uh, you know, we have kids that can you normally put it, you know, down better than what we did tonight. Um, you know, McKenna had an off night. Kate had an off night. You know, Gabby Gabby shot the ball well. Um, uh, you know, Sydney Alforder, I thought, came in and played really well for us. I thought she really battled, uh, defended Diamond really hard down there. I thought she did a great job for us. Got eight rebounds. That she did really well. Thank you. Thank you.